because it tells me what I'm doing. And then I'm going to share my screen. And away we go. Okay. So hi, everybody. Um, thanks very much for joining me today. My name is Dr. Merle Massey. I do have a PhD in history here from the University of Saskatchewan. This purple thing behind me is my most recent book. For those of you who study sciences, this is one of the most famous female scientists we've ever uh, had at the University of Saskatchewan. Her name is Sylvia Fedoric, so famous that we even have a center named after her. I did a biography of Sylvia Fedoric. So I am an author, a Saskatchewan author. I Sometimes you'll hear me on the radio or see me on television. I do a lot of commentary around Saskatchewan politics and Saskatchewan history. But my day job is with you guys. Um, my day job is I'm the coordinator for undergraduate research here at the University of Saskatchewan. And um, so one of the programs that I run is the SHORE program. So this is one I want to tell you guys about today. So, but first of all, as we gather here today, we acknowledge I stand on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. I actually live in bigger Saskatchewan. So I'm an hour outside of Saskatoon. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. I also have my own uh, land acknowledgement that I developed with the Guanama Center for Teaching and Learning. If any of you ever get a chance to do that, I highly recommend it. It's in my email tagline if any of you ever get an email from me. So quick overview because I'm a historian. I got to tell you about origins. Uh, sure started um, because my office has for years and years helped and supported undergraduate students who in the summertime were taking uh, assistantships. So let's say that they were working with a paid job, working with a faculty member throughout the summer. And when we surveyed them, they asked for additional training and support in building research skills and greater connection to other student researchers beyond their own lab. So beyond the graduate students in their own lab, they wanted to meet other undergraduate students across campus who were also engaged and research. So I took that and uh, I kind of developed SURE and then um, we talked to past undergraduate faculty supervisors and so we designed SURE using their feedback and so it was designed with those summer students kind of in mind to start with. So the pilot launched online Sure has always been online, at least it has so far. The pilot program started in May 2020. So right in the middle of the pandemic, I launched a program right here from my office here in, in Bigger. And the initial cohort had about 275, 280 students. Uh, and they were all USASC undergraduate students. They were NSERC USRAs, deans, biomedical, uh, WCVM students, any student on campus who is doing a summer research project. And they were signed up by their college or their department. Um, that first summer I didn't have a, a, an open sign up. So they were all signed up by their college or their department. But then since then, I have ran it every term since. So this is our fifth iteration. So we did run it last winter. And then we ran it again this past summer. It was huge. Um, we had well over 300 students uh, take part this summer because we had both the colleges signed their students up and we had an open online sign up. So we had a lot. Um, and so, yeah, this is where we are. So this is our fifth iteration uh, of, of this particular and what it is. So what sure is it's an explicit focus on skills. So as you're doing your sure work, as you're, as you're you know, watching the web webinars or attending the live events or, or taking any kind of the online training that, that's counted under sure, this is an explicit focus on your research skills, on the skills that you need to be a good researcher. They will help you be a better student, but they are specific around um, learning how to see gaps in knowledge and build new knowledge. That's what research is. It's about building new knowledge that didn't exist before. So this is about training, practice, development. This is about developing you as a researcher. Um, it's it, it goes on your co-curricular record and we designed it that way. So um, what that means is that when you get your transcript, it's actually on your transcript. It's not considered a class, but it's considered co-curricular. So it's like um, tangential to a class or sort of uh, um, it's recognized by the University of Saskatchewan because of the value that it brings, but it's not its own separate class because if it was a class, I'd have to decide um, which college and which department to put it under, and I don't want to do that. That that doesn't work with the particular program the way that I designed it. So we designed it as a co-curricular record, so it will be visible on your transcript. What we try and do is that we try and complement disciplinary training. So I'm not ever going to teach anyone how to do pipetting in a lab. I'm a historian. If you need me to teach you what to do in an archive, let me know. I can help with that. But 
um, what, what I, we try and do is that we centralize anything that can be centralized. Uh, and, and so we complement disciplinary training. So anything that's disciplinary specific or specific to your honors project or any kind of capstone class work that you're doing, anything like that, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that. You don't want me to teach you physiology and pharmacology, believe me. Uh, but uh, anything that I can do that that can centralize that all of you need to learn. So things around communications, professional development, research, research skill set, safety, lab safety, ethics, all kinds of stuff like that. I can aggregate that up and offer it, bundle it together and offer it to you as co-curricular. So we consistently go back and we survey both students and faculty to make sure that we're that that the program that we've designed, that we're actually doing a, a reasonably good job. And so um, we invite you to give regular feedback we invite you to send emails uh, and you know let us know what we're doing if you see something that you think we ought to be doing or included or gee Merle do you think that you can organize a webinar on whatever uh, let me know because uh, because I can certainly try and do that so we're also as I said we're trying to support both course-based research so things like capstone classes honors classes any kind of experiential learning classes fire classes any of you who are taking your first year research experience class um, and and of course those research assistantships some of them happen in the summer the majority do but some of them go all year long and uh, faculty tell us that the SURE program has been built and designed and they like it because it's complementary to what they're teaching and the other the final thing that we try and do is connect students to one another so we try and enhance your connection and learning across the campus to meet students across the campus now you know, online this has been a challenge um, but we're hoping this year to have a few more live and in-person events on campus we've got the first one planned uh, and i'll tell you guys about that in a minute um i cannot do all of this myself like i can't teach you guys everything that you need to know so what i do instead is that and that's why i've got a spider web on this particular slide is that think of me as the spider in the middle of campus and i try and and bring in experts from across the campus so what happens in the fall term and in the winter term is slightly different than what happens in the summer term. In the summer, the library isn't as busy. And so any, any of these sorts of, um, you know, how to build a research question and how to, how to do a good source um, search and all of these sorts of things, how to do a literature review, those, those, uh, to those uh, webinars that they put on tend to come in through the SURE program. And so you have to sign up and all of that. In the fall term and in the winter term, the library has a huge number uh, of webinars. And all of the webinars from the library around research, around writing, and around citation. And it doesn't matter if they're undergraduate or graduate level, they all qualify towards your SURE credit. You don't have to sign up through me, you sign up through the library, and then just let me know what you took. But so University of Saskatchewan Library has a huge amount of support around this. USASC safety services. So I don't, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll, I'll do a bit of a website um, review and show you guys a few of these places. It's now on pause. If you go in through pause and look up training, there's a whole bunch of training around safety, lab training, around COVID training for campus. Some of you probably took that so that you could physically be on campus um, there's uh, training around things like canvas and cascade and all kinds of stuff uh, that we do around campus and some of that not all of it but some of that training qualifies towards your sure credit so especially anything around ethics that all qualifies ethics safety lab safety whmis all of those sorts of things the Canadian Hub for Social and Applied Research is Chaser. They have a YouTube channel where if you're a social scientist in, in particular, and you have to do things like survey design, or you have to do mixed methodology, or you have to do, you want to do a little bit of, of, of work on in vivo or, or SPSS or any of these kind of specific programs, they have some training and some webinars that they've done and they're on their YouTube channel. Those all qualify. And then we have a few other things like uh, there's Skipper, uh, that's a Saskatchewan Center for patient-oriented research and Morningstar Lodge. They both do a lot of work around Indigenous research methodologies. And so if you do any of their Indigenous research methodology training, that can qualify towards your sure credit. Same with the Guanama Center. And of course, the College of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies sometimes has training sessions. Research excellence and innovation is, is, is a, a thing on, is a space on campus. They usually help faculty members um, if they've discovered something that's patentable in, in their, um, 
in, in the course of their research. Research Excellence and Innovation helps with that. And what they did is that this past summer, they offered us nine modules around entrepreneurship. They were all um, recorded and they're all available on our website. And so those are really, really good. And the international office is a big supporter as well. So think of me as the spider hooking in other things that are happening across campus um, and bringing them to you and rolling it up in a way that you then can then put it on your transcript. So that's what it's all about. This is how I recruit students, um, social media blitz. So any of you who don't already follow the undergraduate research initiative, we have Instagram, Twitter. I generally run Twitter because that, that's where I'm most active. I suck at Instagram, so my student Alexis Seleski does that. Um, we're also on Facebook and we try and post as much as possible there. So you kind of give an up to date on what we do there. So that's how we recruited students. We also put it on pause announcements. I tend to put a lot of our sessions on pause. So we get sure students, but we get non sure students who show up as well, which is great. Um, and everybody's always welcome. Uh, I have sent emails to past SURE students. I found that I have a high number of students who've been part of the SURE program before and they still want to stay connected. We have, as of this morning, there were 280 students sign up for this fall. This is the highest sign up only session that we've had so far. So it's really nice to see it growing. Um, in the spring, when I'm looking for that summer group, I will send emails to college and unit undergraduate coordinators and to the co-op and internship coordinators. I do that less in the fall and winter, but I do do that. And I also, and colleges and units will sometimes come to me if they know who their undergraduate research assistants are, and they'll just send me their names and, and, and that works too. So, all right, big deep breath. We're going to talk about what the training looks like and what I managed to bring to you. So this is really about student choice um, as much as possible. It's, it's guided, but it is student choice. So we have it broken down into three areas. So the first area is communications. So this is things like literature searches, academic writing, public writing. I write for the public on a regular basis. And so I do, I push a lot for the sure students around public communication, science communication for the public, these sorts of things. So these are some of the skill sets that I really work on. We also do a lot of training around how to design a research poster, how to, read a, how to read a journal article, how to write a journal article, these sorts of things. So um, we've done past webinars on that. They're all accessible and we've got a few more events coming up this fall. The second area, I just call it research skills. It's sort of like research data management, safety, ethics. There's, there's a whole bunch that kind of falls into this particular area. I don't have a lot of live sessions that, that falls into this particular area. So I wanna reinforce that. Don't assume that my live sessions that come through the SURE program are the only ones that qualify because that's not true. Research skills area actually has a lot because there's all that lab training, ethics training, all of these are online and self-paced, but they all, count towards this area of your research skills. But your citations, that's considered ethics, not communications, just so you know. So learning how to cite things properly, any of the, the library sessions that you take around citations, that belongs under research skills. Um, there's a, there's a, a webinar on data management that I really want everyone to go and watch. It comes from Kevin Reed. It's all about excellent methods for keeping track of what you've studied. So this is really important. Uh, also around your analysis skills. So I mentioned Chaser, the Canadian hub for, uh, um, yeah, Chaser, the Canadian hub for us applied. I forget exactly what it is. Applied and social research, that's it. Um, and their webinars around uh, surveys and in vivo and that kind of thing, that all has to do with analysis. And so that's where that falls. If you have been taking or have to take as part of your research work, anything around, let's say that you're that you're learning um, Java or you're learning uh, uh, a particular how to talk in a particular computer language, that's also considered to be research skills. I don't offer any of those, but you might be taking things like that, or you may have been requested by your supervisor to take things like that. So when you go to report back to me about your research skills training, you can include that as part of it, and that's fine because that certainly falls under research skills uh, development. The third area is professional and entrepreneurial skills. So your professional skills include things like equity, diversity, and inclusion, indigenous 
knowledge, learning about the UN's uh, sustainable development goals. That's very important. Uh, anything of, that we offer or has been offered in the past around networking or job hunting skills or how to put together a resume or how to give a good job interview, those are all included. And we have, like I mentioned, those nine uh, modules around entrepreneurship. So all of that is included under your professional skills. So those are the three baskets, I'll call it. And what we ask, because we only ask for 10 hours, right? So what we do is that each student has to do two hours from each module. So two hours from communication, two hours from research skills, two hours from, from professional skills. Your remaining four hours, that's up to you. So if you're earlier in your research program and, and, and there's some basic stuff around how to do a good literature search or something like that, that you need to really get under your belt early, that's where you should be concentrating your energy. If you're a little bit further along and you need to, to spend a bit of time around things like networking and, and entrepreneurship and your job hunting skills, spend your time there and that's fine. So it's think of it as kind of a smorgasbord. You can, you can choose what suits you wherever we try and meet students where they are. It's also that we do it this way sim simply because we have students who come back and take SURE more than once. And, and they'll have SURE on their co-curricular credit more than once. And let's say that the first time they took it, they did focus on more of those basic skills. And let's say that the next time around, they were further along. So they had more of their, their technical skills, development skills, that kind of thing. And then, and because you can take completely different modules every time. I'm only looking for 10 hours, so it's pretty easy. Uh, lots of students have blow past that 10 hours easy um, over the course of a term, especially considering sometimes your classes actually take ask you to take especially those library uh, sessions. If you're required to take it through your library session and it can count towards your sure, that's awesome. That's go ahead. Um, this is a question that I get a lot. Yes, live and past recorded webinars both count. I offer a number of live sessions every term. I recommend live sessions if you can, simply because then you're there to ask questions. Always the best. Um, but all previously recorded sessions and all of those that self-guided training, all of that self-guided stuff, all of that counts as well. So it's, it's again, fit what's, what suits your schedule, fit what suits you, just get it done before the end of December. These are some examples uh, within each of these. So under communication, we have lots of stuff around literature reviews and journal articles and research posters. We have some around uh, oral communication. Sorry, I didn't change that slide, but we have an end of term instead of end of summer and end of term symposium. We are planning to have one at the end of November, beginning of December. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, I haven't announced it, announced it yet. So woohoo, you guys are first to know. Uh, the second area is research skills and management. So things like your ethics. Um, there's ethics training both at the national level, that's the TCPS core two. There's BRIC training, that's building research relationships with indigenous communities, that comes from Skipper. The USASC library has some ethics modules as well. So anything around ethics and safety. So your lab safety, WEMIS, COVID-19 safety, field safety. If you're planning on doing field research next summer, there's a field safety course you have to take. Uh, and anything around, an, analytical all fits into that middle and then professional development and entrepreneurship are things like cover letters resumes uh indigenous ways of knowing equity diversity and inclusion and then all that stuff around uh, entrepreneurship which included things like learning about intellectual property and licensing which was a really great uh, uh webinar and i highly recommend it if you're interested in how the university takes things that we discover and then puts it out into the world to make the university money because that happens we have a YouTube channel. Um, every live session that we host, including this one, by the way, that I'm recording, um, this is where it goes. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. It gets uploaded. And, and I try and get it uploaded within a day or two of, of, of something happening. So um, by all means, find this YouTube channel. The links are always in your uh, in your emails uh, and subscribe to the channel. Um, because whether or not you actually finish with sure, whether or not you continue with sure, whether you're like, nah, I never want to see Merle again, doesn't matter. I don't really care. Go ahead, subscribe to that channel. Everything that we do with sure is going to get uploaded there. So by all means, uh, register. 
I do have some things organized for our fall 2021 schedule. Uh, it's not complete yet, but we do have uh, a number of things that, that are um, there. We have both a website, um, which is the VP Research website, and then you'll find it under undergraduate, under students, undergraduate, and then there we are. And sure is the top thing that comes up on our banner. Uh, and we also have a pause channel. So if, if you only connect with the university through pause, go into pause and click on undergraduate research and you'll find our channel and then add your add our channel to your favorites and then all that sure stuff including all of the links for the signups will be there as well so you can find us either way i also send out emails that's why when you signed up for sure you had to click a button that said yes i accept emails from merle yeah well that's me so i that's a requirement um so you will get regular emails. They usually come Monday mornings, generally, and kind of give you an overview of what's happening on campus this week that qualifies towards your SURE credit. So I haven't started sending those yet. Um, I've sent a couple of emails, mostly introductory emails and a few sign-up emails for today and some of the things coming up, but nothing too, nothing too major yet. But usually every Monday morning, you'll get your Monday morning rundown. Um, two things to know. If I am if I am creating a special webinar, uh, chances are you have to sign up through Eventbrite. So anytime it says register, you will be registering through Eventbrite. And all events that require a sign up are, are via Eventbrite. I use it because it's really easy to sign up. And then I don't have to think about it again. You all get an email from Eventbrite that day and then two hours before and then right before it happens. So it's like it's automatic, it's built in. And and they'll just it'll, they'll just keep hounding you until you actually show up, you know, for whatever session it is that I've organized. So that's why I use it because they hound you, not me. Um, but just make sure that that stuff isn't ending up in your spam. Um, so just watch out for that. And sometimes if it's in your spam and you click on a link and you think it's going to work, it doesn't. You need to move it to your inbox. So do that. Same with Mailchimp. Today is the last day for the signups. So today is September seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Today is the last day for signups for the fall term for sure. Um, and then I'm going to transfer everything. So any emails that I've sent so far, I've just sent from my undergraduate research outlook email thing. However, I am going to move that over to Mailchimp. It simplifies our mail outs because you might get sick of emails from me and then you can unsubscribe. So um, that's that's one of the reasons why I use it. Um, they're also prettier. There's pictures and stuff. So I kind of like them. But MailChimp stuff will also end up in your spam email. So check there. If you haven't heard from me, check there um, so that you don't miss any of your announcements. Move it to your inbox and then add us to add that to your allowed list. Uh, and then that way you won't miss anything. OK. I wanted to tell you a few faculty comments. So when we first set up Sure, so last summer when we ran it for the first time, uh, we asked faculty about it and Regan Mandrick, who's uh, I believe she's in computer science, said, in my opinion, sure does exactly what these types of programs should do. It gives faculty supervisors the task of training researchers on the specifics of the discipline, but it centralizes those things that can be centralized. And so that's where we were aiming. So then this summer at the end of the program, um, the students who applied for their, their co-curricular credit, I asked them to give me some feedback. And this is just a sample. Every single piece of feedback I got was keep the program, we like it, but these were some examples. I thought it was a great program, one that all students from different backgrounds at different stages of their education can benefit from. So I felt really good about that, students from everywhere. I greatly appreciated the opportunity to watch the recordings online, especially those from previous year years. I felt like I had a lot more freedom to choose what was relevant to me. Thank you for that and please keep it. So uh, clearly we the, the online, that YouTube channel and being able to go in and watch whatever you need to watch depending on what you need it for that's that I'm really hitting um, what students are asking for with that I found sure I found sure very beneficial as I did not have much background on conducting research at the university before I started my position. Sure allowed me to learn beneficial information on a variety of subjects. I enjoyed that the webinars could be watched after they were posted, therefore I could fit them into my schedule. So um, yeah, that was something else that that really came up. Um, in, in the flexibility of sure. Sometimes you can't always make it to those live events. Um, but I promise to record them uh, unless I have a speaker who won't let me record them. But for the most part, everybody's been really good about that. Okay, 
big deep breath again. People ask me this all the time, who keeps track? Well, I'm not keeping track. That is your job. This is part of your professional development as a student. You have to keep your own record of what events or webinars you have attended or what you've watched. Um, I do have kind of a tracking sheet. I did include it in one of the most recent emails. And when everybody finishes signing up at the end of the day today, and I send out a group email on Monday, I'll send that tracking sheet again, print it up, hand write it, save it somewhere. I'll send it as both a Word document and as a PDF. And so then, because I had one student already who said, Merle, I can't write on PDFs. Can you send it to me in Word? Like, oh, okay, you can have the Word document. So I'll just send you guys both. So then you've got a place to, to keep track of what you've, what you've attended or what you've watched. What happens is at the end of the term, I will send out an email uh, with a link to a survey. And that's, you have to fill out that survey in order to qualify for your co-curricular credit. And I do that because I'm the only one who can upload your co-curricular credit. There's sometimes that you guys can, can apply for that, but this is the way for me to double check. You send me your tracking sheet, I take a look at it, and then I can upload your, your co-curricular credit. Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's the undergraduate research office that will upload that credit for you. That will happen at the end of term. Um, so that'll be kind of Christmas time ish. I usually give you guys right to the end of term. So it might be the beginning of January that you receive the email from me that says, or from my office um, that says, you know, apply for your apply for your co curricular records. So that'll be that'll be coming up. That's how we work it. Huh. What else does SURE do for students? Well, we try and do more. Um, we try really hard to create connections. This, this has some uneven uptake. We've had some, some times where we've had some student-led spaces, things like uh, uh, we've had students develop and lead uh, journal clubs and they've gone really well and and folded like i've i've had both happen i've had uh, we have a, a discord channel which sometimes gets used and sometimes gets forgotten so we do have a discord channel um if you guys are interested in in chatting back and forth with each other using that discord channel we'll make sure that we that we you know revive it and that we're using it uh, one space that's very strong that's doing really well is a student club that was created under the auspices of SURE, and that's the Science Research and Society Club. It used to meet every Friday at specifically at noon, uh, but the director who runs it, she has a class until 1230. So, um, so we've kind of been shuffling around a little bit with the timing, but it's usually Fridays. And um, and the, so the first one is our first live event of the year. So we're actually going to have a live and in-person event on October 1st. But our speaker just told me yesterday that he can't be live. So he's going to be coming in via Zoom. Um, but everybody else will be live. We'll be in Kirk 144 at 1230. There is a sign up, but you'll find it in your email. And he's going to be talking about science communication for the public. So anybody who's interested in science communication and how we can do a better job of talking to people about science, that's what he's going to be talking about. We also have some social events. We've had movie screenings, online moving movie screenings, uh, but we were really hoping to do some lab crawls and some in-person events. So we're looking into that. I do have um, I've lined up a tour of the heating plant on campus, which will probably happen in, in November. So you're actually going to get a chance to see where we get our heat from on campus. And uh, we're just waiting for the current COVID explosion to calm down. And then so I'll let you guys know about it. Uh, there are more events coming. So just so you know. Um, the other thing that my office does is that we advocate for students. Um, so one of the things we're working on is a student supervisor agreement. So for those of you who are undergraduate students working with a supervisor, we're working on developing a student supervisor agreement to kind of help out with that and, and uh, give some context to that for you. So uh, we have a capstone event. At the end of summer, we have the SURE Symposium. We are planning to have it again in, in late November, very beginning, first week of December, right before exams start. Um, so this is gonna be a way for uh, any of those experiential classes or capstone classes or project-based classes. This will be a space for any of those um, presentations that we can kind of roll them up together and then people can see them not just just in your classroom, but outside your classroom, right? So across the university, we'll have both an online component, probably in Cascade, uh, sorry, in, in Canvas, um, but uh, and we're looking to have a physical component as well, probably in Convocation Hall or maybe an Ag Bio in the atrium. Details to come, but we are planning to have uh, a symposium. 
uh, this fall. And again, of course, in the spring, the spring symposium is run by the USSU. They are moving that to the end of March this next term so that they can capture all the honor students. So any of you who are working on honors projects, high recommendation for you to um, put your work in to the USSU event. So um, we are very active on social media. We have, we're Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, I told you about the YouTube channel. We are also on LinkedIn. So if you're planning on, you know, applying for jobs, like us and follow us on LinkedIn. We'll try and help you out there as much as possible. We also have a podcast series that we started uh, this past January. I think we've done about 12. And uh, we're going to have another one here at the end of this month that'll be coming out and some, some great works coming out around that. If you're interested in being a guest on our podcast, do let me know. Um, we're always happy to talk to students. And I think that might be the end of my presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, oops, I will stop sharing. And I'm going to open it up um, to anyone who has any questions for me. And you can put them in the chat or you can uh, does this oh, see there's questions already does this session need to be tracked on the sure seat probably not um it's a little bit of a tough one to track you can probably put it under maybe professional development but really this is more just around you know you finding out how this whole thing works is there a specific sheet you log your sessions i do have one but if you want to create your own or create an excel spreadsheet that's perfectly fine um you don't have to use the sheet that i've developed um just wondering finish it until december 6th right you mean in terms of um like do you have to have all your stuff finished by i like to give you guys christmas as well um to finish just because you know sometimes you sometimes you need the extra time so yeah that's very i try and be i mean you guys are busy with you might be so busy with classes that you know you might have more time as you're doing your exams and that's okay you know to get everything done so yeah and and finals you know classes are number one sure was designed as a way to kind of support your classes support you as a researcher support you in your development um as 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 a researcher yeah how does the credit system work where does it get recorded it gets recorded so there's a an, an actual website called the co-curricular record and um it gets uh put in there and i'm one who uploads it so student and and if you're interested that can show you what it looks like um co-curricular record i'll show you what the dashboard looks like i'll share my screen first i'll log in then i'll share my screen i have a screen behind my laptop so okay i'm going to share my screen so you guys get a chance to take a look at this so this is what the usas co-curricular record looks like oh i have to actually hit share it's two steps to share my screen. This is the USAS co-curricular record. So it's ccr.usask.ca. And if you're a student, you can also log in there. And um, and and so you can take a look. So the co-curricular record there's, and then you can take a look at what's called the opportunity directory. And it will show you all kinds of positions across campus and all kinds of volunteer things that you can do across campus that qualify for co-curricular records. So this is just one. Um, so yeah, so this is where it gets recorded. It's attached to your, um, um, it's attached to your transcript. So that's where it gets, yeah. Yeah, so, and if you have individual research paper with your, with your, someone said with your uh, HR management class, where you were worrying about how to do research and then you found this program. Yeah, this is exactly the sort of thing that I'm that I'm talking about because you get dropped into these classes and asked to do a research project or, you know, do some kind of like, well, how the hell do you do that? Well, I'm, we're here to try and help you with that. So I, 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 I try. Um, oh, I, I know the other thing that I wanted to show you. So while I'm here, I'll show you. So this is, um, so the office of the vice president research, that's where I work. So you'll click under students, you'll find undergraduate research. And so all of the different programs that I run. So SURE is the number one program. It's the largest program that I run. I try and keep you guys up to date on any opportunities and funding. We have a lot of research stories. So these are the research stories around students who've also conducted undergraduate research. These are faculty members who work with undergraduate students and, and conduct research. And so I do some interviews with faculty. 
Um, we um, fire. So the first year research experience, uh, learn more about fire. So you can learn more about that there. We do have an undergraduate research blog that's new that just started this week. So we've got some interesting blogs. If any of you are taking um, um, health sciences, there's a really, really interesting class at a health sciences and that's where they are. I run a program called Mentor Step and this for Indigenous women in STEM. It's almost finished now though. And then there's some additional research resources and tools. Um, if you're looking for about us, so all of our handles so we're very social um the instagram handle i'll just find it right here so the instagram handle is usask underscore ug underscore research so that's our instagram the other social media handles so here's twitter and that's usask ug research i don't know if you can see that usask and then capital ug research so that's the twitter and facebook um oops that's mentor step sorry um there it is um usask ug research so it's actually the same as our twitter handle so that's a good spot to find us um what else should i show you guys oh undergrad so back of over here i was going to show you uh the sure page so i gave you kind of an overview of everything that i do under under undergraduate research but the sure page um, I would recommend that you um, look either on pause or here on our sure web page, because this is where you'll find all the upcoming webinars, training and events. And there's links for the registration. So some of the ones that we have coming up is to, okay, the to kick off event right now. And then next week, we're going to do an overview of how does research work at USASC. So this is a broad scale overview of the tri councils and everything around, you know, USASC research uh, the following week. I'm going to walk you guys through what it looks like to land an undergraduate research job. So that will come up. And then we have our live session with science communication with Jay Wetter. We have uh, a roundtable for from faculty. I'm just working with them to figure out what day and time works best, but it's going to be early October. And I'll, I'll send you guys all the information for that. It's, from, it, it's a roundtable of USASC faculty on why they hire undergraduate students and what undergraduate students find in their, in their working with them and what undergraduate students learn. We just confirmed today, so we have a roundtable of previous undergraduate students who've been researchers, and they're going to do a roundtable about their research experiences and how they landed those positions. So that's coming up. We're planning a faculty student meetup. It's sort of like think of it as speed dating for undergraduate research connections. I have a session coming up on the research skill development framework that really helps you to identify where you're at as a researcher, what skills you have now and what skills you need to work on. So I'm going to walk you guys through the research skill development framework. That's not till the end of October. And then we've got a few more that are still coming for dates and times and things like that. So this also, but this also gives you all the links to all the USASC library webinars around writing, research and citation. And um, those all are working. You can go to safe safety services and training, that's also eligible for sure credit. All the research ethics training that's available and that all uh, um, counts. The link to the Canadian Hub for Applied and Social Research, so Chaser and their Chaser YouTube site. USAS Career Services has been a huge partner for us and so all of those are there as well. And you'll also find a lot of past webinars. So everything that we did this past summer, there are links there to all of those recorded videos, how to organize and analyze your literature review. If you just go onto our YouTube site, they're all there as well, but some of them um, are on Panopto instead of, and there's a couple of them that are on Panopto. So if you go in through, I left all the summer ones on there on the website, just because um, there's some really good ones in there. And I thought that you might as well have, you know, have an easy link to them. So, okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and answer a few more questions. Okay. So just for clarification, SURE program held term by term. After the full term, SURE program ends, and then if I want to keep this program, I apply again next January. Yeah, so one of the good things about SURE is, let's say that you joined this term and you only managed to get like four hours of, of SURE. I don't want you to lose that. So just re, like apply again, sign up again in January, and then add your other six hours. And then at the end of that term, okay, then you submit and say, okay, I finally got my 10 hours. All right. I get my CCR credit. I'm good with that. That's that's totally fine with me. Um, other students, they've got 10 hours this term. They sign up again next term. They find totally 10 different webinars and because they have to be totally 10 different separate 
hours uh, and they get two co-curricular credits. I've had lots of students do that and that's fine too. Okay, just clarifying, we plug our time in our spreadsheet and then send you the picture of it or share it with you to receive the credits. Yeah, so in order to get your credits, you do have to fill out that survey and part of that survey, you can upload you know, your, your tracking sheet. Sometimes it doesn't work, so you have to email it to me, to me separately, but that's fine too. You just email it to undergraduate.research at usas.ca and so that I've got a record of it um, and so that I can, I can uh, clarify that yes, you did actually do 10 hours and that you can receive your co-curricular credit. Wow, writing workshops in library included as well. Yes, all writing workshops from the library are included. I did attend a few since fall term start. So yes, all of those that you've done since fall term started, those are can all count towards your sure credit. If you've already started using the library um, for all of that, any of that stuff, that goes towards your sure credit. Yeah, that makes sense. Research is definitely a long journey. Do you have to register formally for the program or as long as you register for each webinar you're in? No, you have to register formally for the program. So you have to actually tell me that you're part of the program. Um, otherwise, I won't have a record and you're not going to be getting those regular um, emails. Um, yeah, so make sure that you've registered for the whole program so that I've got your, your NSID and your email address. Uh, how do you do that? I can put the link in, I'll put the link into search Survey monkey. How did you get here? That's really cool, but I'm curious. There you go. So that's that's the survey monkey to register, and it is open till the end of the day today. I'll probably keep it open all weekend to be truthful, because I'm not going to look at it again until Monday. So if you haven't formally registered, this is how you register. Otherwise, you're not getting the emails from me, and then you won't get the link to the survey at the end of the, the year to apply for your co-curricular credit. So make sure you register. Any other questions? Awesome, thanks, you're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thanks, yes. You're welcome. You're welcome for everything that we have. Pre so everything that we've previously recorded that's on that YouTube channel, it's fair game. Anything that you need to use or share with friends because like they're also working on research stuff and they're completely lost, like bring them along. MailChimp, you don't have to worry about that. I will um, work on I'll, I use MailChimp. It's a tool that I use to send out mass emails. Um, just to make sure that if you're not getting emails from me, go look in your spam folder because chances are my stuff is ending up in your spam folder because I'm sending it through MailChimp. Um, so if that's if all of a sudden you haven't heard from me for a while, go check your spam folder and, and see what's happening because they're probably in there. And that's it. That's all that I have to say and to tell you guys about. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to email me, feel free to contact us on any of our social media, um, and we'll try and answer your questions as, as quick as possible. We're pretty active and busy. I have 4,000 Twitter followers, so I'm easy to find um, if you wanted to follow me, Merle Massey, as opposed to undergraduate research. Other than that, um, yeah, have a great fall. Remember, school comes first. I'm here to help as much as possible. If you have ideas for events that you would like to see under sure that you think would be good for other students who are also in sure drop me a line drop me an email and let me know um yeah any i'm always open for new ideas other than that have a great term everybody you're welcome you're welcome